we're well under Wally Bar, and you've probably seen this before in some of my other um, videos recently, and there's this little meter that I've um, purchased from Amazon, and it, I'm quite intrigued by it at the moment, because <laughs> every time I go from the workshop into me house, I just seem to bring in loads of dust. But not only that, with the dogs and what have you, they also make a bit of a mess and we have dust everywhere. But I was a bit curious because I've been sort of like um, doing a little bit of a, had a few little tests recently on various filters and what have you, air filters and air purifiers. I'm finding that some of them aren't that effective. And the worst ones are really your vacuum cleaner. So I thought I'd just do a little test um, of uh, the air before and the air after while you're running your vacuum cleaner because the filters in these vacuum cleaners they say they filter down to naught point well to three microns so not point three yeah three down to three microns and it's pretty much the um smallest particles that most filters including dust masks can actually filter down to which is three microns and considering a lot of viruses and what have you are smaller than that especially coronavirus you know lovely covid19 wonderful times and um, they're, they're actually can be a lot smaller than three microns anyway. So what we've got in our house is we've got a variety of different filters and, and this particular filter I'm talking about today is the vacuum cleaner, the filter in your ordinary vacuum cleaner. The one in our Henry vacuum, which is down here. Say hi to Henry. Hi Henry. And that has a HEPA filter in it. And the HEPA filter is supposed to be 0.3 microns. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a before and after. Now we've got my meter readings here, as you can see. And the um, 2.5 micron and the 10 microns are relatively low at the moment. Uh, 2.5 is at 9 uh, micrograms per cubic meter, which is quite low, very low in fact. According to this, it would be in the excellent range, according to the, the little scale there. And the, the PM10, so the 10 micrograms per cubic meter, are currently at 16, which is also in the, blah, 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 in the excellent range. Yes. So I'm quite pleased with that. that. What happens when I run my vacuum cleaner to hoover? Well, Mr. the hoovering up after coming from the workshop and caused all the dust in the house because I took the clothes off and there's clouds of dust that followed me into the house because our workshop is attached to our home. So I'm going to run the hoover. I'm going to do a little bit of vacuum on this little rug down here, which the dogs seem to like to lay on with all their dander and smelly stuff. And, oh, and me. And just see what the meter reading um, changes to, if it changes, um, from the exhaust of the vacuum cleaner. Now this could be representative to your shop vacs as well because, you know, if you, like me, my shop vacs run through a little vortex system and it does help a lot, but also my vacs are actually not in the workshop, they're next door, in the other attached barn. So that is not really a huge issue for me. But if you're, um, if you're just using a yeah, an ordinary shop vac and you're using it we're in the workshop well they have filters in them and they're not going to be filling down any smaller than 0.3 microns if you're lucky and that will clock up pretty quickly with a shop vac so i'm going to do this little test and just see what happens or well, come down here it's a bit crazy i know i know i've lost the plot <laughs> so it's been said before so i'm gonna put that down on the floor there like so so you can see it so move that down here like that and I'm going to try and position the uh, Henry vacuum cleaner like so. So please excuse the noise for a few minutes while I actually do a little bit of vacuum. A bit of vacuum, a bit of oovering. So anyway, now the point about this is that uh, we actually run some air filters in the house by the what? The LV, uh, LV133 air filter, which I can show you in a minute, um, which does actually work really well and helps to keep smells down in the house as well. But my point being is I've... I've actually done some videos on the um, air filter, air purifiers before, and I've had quite a few comments on there from poor, these poor souls living in the um, United States where all these uh, forest fires are, all these wildfires, and they're saying that their, their quality is horrendous at the minute. So I thought that'd be quite a good idea if you get yourself one of these, you know, and let's see whether or not you're in the safe limits. But let's see what happens when we're using the old vacuum cleaner, or this Henry here. And it was made by pneumatic. It's actually very old. This is about 20 years old, this vacuum cleaner, so that's, that's quite a bit bad. I have had to change um, the brushes in at once, and that is all, oh, and a switch. Oh, yeah, and, and a hose. But apart from that, it's still going. So let's turn it on, see what happens. Right, so currently we are PM 2.5s are at 12, and PM 
tens are at 19. So 12 and 19. So see what happens. Watching that, and it went, it was going up to around 20 from the exhaust on the air filter, yeah, 19, 20, but also the um, PM10 to 32. So, yeah, that has actually gone up considerably. And it's, is it screwing down now, or is it? Yeah, that definitely increased. So, the air filters in these, uh, let's go down here. Oh, oh there we go. So the old bag filters, so it's basically it's just like the the bag, oh, let's pull my trousers up, there you go, that's better isn't it? <laughs> the, the bags which are in, um, in these old vacuum cleaners aren't that effective. Now it might be a HEPA filter what have you, but um, not really funny, there's a filter that's literally full of dust and dand and what have you, you know, you're going to get a certain amount of work its way through the filter and end up coming out of the exhaust of your vacuum cleaner. So they're not going to be that great. But as you can see here, the levels did go up. Uh, I did watch the PM 2.5, which is the smaller particles. They went up a little bit, but not actually too bad, actually. But it was the PM 10s, the larger particles, that went up. Now, I, I find that a bit surprising because I'd have thought that the larger particles were less likely to get through the bag than the finer particles. But it's, um, yeah, it definitely made, it made, there was a change. But I wouldn't say it was considerable, so I don't think it was a um, a huge issue. But if you um, are, if you do think it's an issue, I think the biggest problem is actually just disturbing the dust and putting it into the atmosphere. Now I don't know if you've ever been around with a brush and what have you, and started sweeping up in the in the summer, and you're watching the light shining through the winter, winter through the window and what have you, and uh, you can see all the dust is just floating around everywhere. And all you do is create a mess. Don't use a brush. To brush your floors it's a really bad idea use the old vacuum cleaner and what have you and suck the old dust up and the same applies really in the workshop because all you're going to do is you know, suck all that old dust that you've been um either sanding or from the machines and what have you and we've got to remember that we don't actually really know what's inside it what the actual dust is comprised of it isn't just wood and remember some woods such as oak and what have you are carcinogenic anyway they have um high high levels of um formaldehyde in the timber now I know that the levels are very very low regarding formaldehyde in timbers and even in your home what have you. Um, the worst time of year for this though is in the summer. Because in the summer, it, it, you, because as the timbers heat up that gives off gases so you're more likely to get the formaldehydes. But equally saying that, you know, disturbing the dust and what have you and um, put it into the atmosphere, you are going to be breathing it in. And really you want to be capturing it so you can get rid of it. Anyway, thank you for watching my little video. And, you know, if you can be most kind and give us a like and subscribe, and I'll put a link in the bottom of the video, in the description for this little meter, if you're interested. They're not expensive either. Surprisingly cheap. And they, they, this particular one seems to um, work really well. I've, I've played about with some others, and I wasn't that impressed with them, to be honest. And also, they didn't have the CO2 um, reading either. So, this one, I, I think, is definitely worthwhile buying. Anyway, if you most kind, give us a like and subscribe, and maybe click the little bell icon. And... Uh, you know, you'll get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket, that'll be me uploading uh, another video. And if you are suffering uh, over there in the United States regarding with all these false fires or anywhere in the world, you know, yeah, put a comment below and what have you. It'd be quite, you know, it'd be quite interested to see how you guys are managing what you're doing regarding this, you know, quite tough times. So, thank you for watching. Caroline, can you help me up? I feel like a beached whale. Oh, hello, Wally. <laughs> hello, he's a culprit.
Oh, Look at this. You need me? Yeah, you can help me out. I'm stuck on the floor. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> I was joking. 